The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Everyone, Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour, 877 927 6648. Love to get your calls today. Plenty of time for calls. Nice slow week we got here. Um, that's number one. Number two is um, within the context of what we're looking at here in the marketplace, uh, there is constant news coming out, and the market is responding. If it didn't respond, that would be one thing, but it seems to be responding. So anything that's tweeted or mentioned about uh, China or the U USMCA, um, it's having some effect, and we can't deny that. But I wanted to go through some of the technicals that we're looking at, and I've been talking about this uh, with my, uh, for my subscribers for a while here on the air and for subscribers, and I've been saying that in the context of technical analysis, while there are some things that are not working at all, in other words, the MACD, the moving average convergence divergence in the daily chart of the Dow, dropped very sharply from being really good in just three days. It pulled back and it went negative. Now it's flat, but there is still internal strength in the actual price of the Dow. The stochastic went from the 97 percent. You remember I was, I was talking about that and saying you can only go to 100. Going to 97 is quite incredible. And uh, within that context, what we're looking at is that the price has gone from 27,675 to today's all-time high of 28,113. So we're talking about 300 and almost 400 points up, and yet the stochastics only at 75 percent. But I'll make a big deal in my webinar. I did uh, what was it? Uh, just over you know, a week ago today. Um, I was talking about how these moving averages can be very important if you can use them uh, correctly. I thought I was using it correctly because right here when we made that peak F top at 28,019, the down on the 19th of, of November, that was the first period of pullbacks that we had that was pretty sharp since maybe um, middle of October. Quite a sharp pullback from 28. 1090 to 27,675. You did get the MACD going down. You did get the stochastic. But what's really important is that these moving averages, the nine period, the green nine period exponential moving average and the black moving average, right there, that's where I was expecting it would flatten out. The green line would flatten out. The black line would start to tilt a little bit down instead of being up. And within about three or four sessions, you'd start to get some kind of um, weakness in the nine period moving average going towards the black and then crossing over to the, to um, be a negative moving average crossover. Well, we haven't got that. Even today, the nine EMA is a strong support is at 27,910. Uh, just, uh, what, is 100 points from here? Is that right? No, 200 points. Um, so that's quite a distance. And within that context, you know, keep your eye on the left side chart. We'll come back to the weekly and the, the monthly in a moment. You've got the S&P, weak, much weaker MACD, moving average convergence to divergence. Stochastic a little bit stronger at 79%. Price went to the 14-period moving average, just about touched it, didn't touch it. Went back over the line, and now all-time high. In fact, as we're speaking, it's pretty much an all-time high. Um, that's very good action. So it's going to have to be something something that comes out here that really surprises the market that's going to make it turn down. Why? Because in this particular pattern, what we would normally see, we even saw it right here, where there was this little double top um, earlier in November, and then it pulled back. It pulled back to the 9 period moving average. It didn't break down, but it did pull back for a couple of days. Here, We've broken, instead of the H formation, the lowercase H with an arch formation, we've gone to a new high. So within that context, it says there is there is still price strength. 
and that's really important. Uh, within the context of the QQQ, the NDX 100, same thing. This time, the MACD hasn't crossed positive, and yet here it is at all-time highs. Stochastics at 74%, even weaker than the Dow and the S&P. Prices, 20384 was the high that was made uh, seven, about six or seven sessions ago, before everything started turning down. And now, all-time high, 20474. Uh, we're three cents away from that. And uh, the tech wheels are not that strong here, but look at that nine period exponential moving average and the black moving average, the 14, nine and 14 are holding steady. And that's the difference. So right here is exactly where it should have been turning down. It didn't. Now the weekly chart in the uh, QQQ is in leg C. The S&P is right here. S&P is in leg C. Now let me just double check that ahead, yes. A is right here. <clears throat> Don't forget, if you're checking this out, the week of the 16th of August was a slightly higher high, so that counts as leg A, great leg A, great leg B. It breaks out, now it's a blue C, meaning you're in a buy mode in the weekly chart. Now, the daily, the monthly chart is in leg B. Uh, the IWM, IWM is trading at up 60 cents at 162.19. Recovery high, all-time high is 173, 10 points higher, 173.39 made in August of 2018, way over a year ago, and it plummeted to 125, 50 points. That's, I mean, that's a huge move, and uh, 40 was 40, uh, 50 points from 173, 28, 28, 30 points, 30%. Uh, so now what we're looking at is that the, this is leg C, brand new leg C in the monthly chart. So the IWM actually has found strength, it's become a bit of a leader. The MACD and Stochastic in the weekly chart are really strong, it's in leg C. Now let's go to gold. Gold is trading right now. Um, it's up 2.2 at 1459. It's making this H pattern, remember the low case H, you come down and you make an arch formation, you try to test the left side low. So far it's held above the continuous contracts low of 14. 46.2 made on the 12th of November. The low today is 1449.6. Uh, so far, that's good. Hadn't even gone to a leg D in the weekly chart. I suspect it will go to the leg D. Um, this is just a big digestive phase after such a spectacular move, uh, going from uh, basically in 2018, it was a 12, in the 12 uh, teens, 12, 12, 12, 15, and it screams up. To 1566 in the continuous contract. Those prices will change because it's continuous, but um, the patterns remain. So silver, <coughs> excuse me, nice move up, up 15 cents at 17.04 in silver. It's trying to hold the 200 period moving average. This is good action, but the weekly chart says, yeah, it might be good action on the day, but there's still, um, it's probably going to make lower lows and slightly lower highs. Uh, we'll see, but at this particular point is a good day. Uh, if we can get to the 1728 area uh, by early next week, I'd say, hey, that's good. Now it's going to make a rectangle formation. Go right back in and try to test the 17.50s. But we'll see. It better hold 1660, otherwise it's a problem. The dollar, the dollar is holding quite nicely. It's up 0.02 at 9834. It's that weekly chart. We'll talk about that in a moment. And that monthly chart just about to wrap up on Friday. And it's going to make a peak D. How it does that is going to be really important for December. Dow's up 56, SP's up 7. I'll be right back. If you're not currently using the TAS profile scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, we're back and I'm just showing you something that's a technique that I use, Chapman Wave, Chapman Wave Inside Track it's called, and it's a repellent or a support zone. In this particular case, it's a repellent zone. This is the dollar. It needs to break above this downtrend line with two downtrend lines. So it makes a little bit of a, a mini channel, narrow channel, let's say. And 98.45 was the previous high peak. See, it needs to get nicely above that start leg D, but also to challenge the high that was made on the 15th of October of 98.65, needs to get above that, and uh, that'll be very positive. So slow, a slow grind for the euro, for the dollar. EUR USD is trading. The euro is trading in that. Remember the dreaded H pattern? There's that arch formation, goes to peak A. Very often it's a B and it fails. Either an A or a B minus comes down. Now we're going to see how it holds. Same thing in the weekly chart. So at 1.101, uh, up 0.04%. It's just stuck. It, it must, 1.098 is what it has to hold. And the USDJPY, which is the yen, your dollar yen currency pair, nice rally. But here again, at 109.09, .09, up 0.17, it needs to push higher. It needs to get into the 109.55 area. It needs to challenge the 109.48, 14 period, sorry, 200 period exponential moving average in the weekly chart. And the previous high was 109.488. So it needs to get above that to start D. Uh, so far, it's acting quite nicely. Uh, that's good. Um, let's do high grade copper right now. High grade copper. It's uh, a nice move up today, 0.02 at 2.67 on the continuous contract. New leg uh, B and a gray leg B. It's it's better. It's not great, but it is a, a little bit better. Uh, we spoke about crude oil. Let's see, natural gas is trading at um, down sharply, 2.508, down 0.07. Whoa, it didn't make the cup formation. In fact, it's gone to lower lows. Trough E, trough B, in leg C to the downside. Back in the trading range once again. Wow. Uh, let me just look at uh, LLC, which is um, live cattle. Live cattle is holding in that rectangle formation. Now, rectangle formations can last a lot longer than your patients. Even if they pop a little bit up or pop a little bit down, uh, they can just hang around. So this is leg. This is go peak A, gray A, gray B, because it's under the previous high. And now it goes to F slash C. We're still 
okay technical, so it just should continue sideways. So uh, live cattle, high level consolidation, very good. I wouldn't be surprised if it comes back to the 117 area and then starts a bigger move to the upside. It is a leg B, having started in the weekly chart. So far, there's very good action. Uh, LH is the live hogs. Uh, pulling back, oh, this doesn't look good. This really is just struggling and struggling. Something's going to happen to really trigger a big move up in the hogs. Coffee, KC, KC is trading at uh, a new leg up. So this is leg, so this is either A or B. It's really good action. I, I don't see, I'm going to call it a new leg B. At this particular point, this is probably a new buy mode, but I'm not yet sure. But it is acting well at 117.15, down dollar 75 right now, acting very nicely. I suspect it's going to try for the 119 to 120 area over the next week and a half. Uh, now, a couple of things that I oh, the rectangle formation, the USD JPY. Um, look at this. No, it wasn't that. It was the EUR, USD. Oh, where, where was it? Well, where did I say rectangle formation? LC? Yes. Okay, live, live cattle. You see this, this pattern here? It pulls back sharply, and then it starts to move up. And within that context of the rectangle, very often it can have, in a, in a shorter time frame, you can have a Chapman wave buy mode that goes to at least a D going just about two just on or just over the previous high and then it pulls back into this is exactly what we're looking at in fact we have some stocks that are doing that we are long bdsi look so it, it went up to a peak d we're in the 15 17 area and went to 6.45 taking a little bit off uh, two little bits off i still have a long position but look what happened it went into the rectangle formation It's trying it's attempting to get to 6.45 in the shorter time frame it's gone to a peak d once it's pulled back it's trying to do another one so that's the pattern that i was talking about um, we have another one which actually broke out this is unusual it went right to that area of the rectangle with the, in a shorter time frame it made that peak d but now what it's done is gone to a second peak d much higher cyber uh, arc we're in at 104, took a little bit, uh, two, two portions off, still got a core position at 124.19 right now, uh, hit 124.50, a 20-point gain um, in a pretty reasonable amount of time, just in November, from November, I think it was the 3rd or 5th, the 6th, from, no, sorry, the 5th, from the 5th. Um, and now it's gone to a leg D in the 120-minute chart. So these patterns, these rectangle patterns, if you recognize them, they can be, it could be a really nice technique to use. Um, I, I, the next thing I want you to show you is a Roku. Uh, Roku right now is trading. There's a rectangle, same thing. It's gone to the 120. The daily went to 165.10, pulls back sharply to 147.51. Um, now it's got a Chapman wave inside buy mode. He has a 120 minute chart, just went to a D. Right, what was it? 165.10 was the high of that last move. 176 is the all time high, 55. Um, and today it went to 164.19, just uh, 20, uh, about 21 cents below the, the, that high. So this is it. This is the technique that we're talking about. Uh, the question I had about L. Uh, L uh, let me just put this LGF. Where, where, where's my, where, LGF. Uh, yes, so the question about yesterday, what happened? I'll tell you what happened. So here's, this is almost the same thing in a rectangle formation. Look at this. It's more like a cup, but it's got the, the look of a rectangle. It's trading right now. This is one that we did own. Um, it pulled back a little bit, and I just wasn't happy with it because there were other stocks that we were looking at that I thought had better opportunities um, to use that money. And it did pull back some, but it's a really nice move today. It hit, so at 7.65, at the low of October the 30th, it runs all the way to nine point, right here, 9.92. Uh, then it pulls back and it creates a small little rectangle and then breaks down. This is the breakdown I didn't like three days ago. We were out even earlier, but I said, you know what? I, I'm keeping it on the list. It is looking good, but I'm just not sure if, if I'm, I wasn't that happy with it because this is the first decent move that it's starting to have in the monthly since it made 36.48 in January of 2018. That's the New York Stock Exchange, except this has gone from 36 to 7. So now 
this is a great candle. So the question was, um, it looks, it does look good. It's in this rectangle formation. I'm suspecting that it's going to have quite a little, quite a lot of resistance in the 9.90s. If it breaks into the 10.08, 10.11 area, that's really important because that makes the 14 period moving average in the in the weekly chart makes it the first time that it's actually been trading above it. Um, well, if it closes there at any stage this week, it'll be the first time it closed above that 14-period um, moving average since just very briefly in January of 2019, but goes all the way back to September the 28th of the week of 28th of 2018, where it was at 25.07. So that's, this is a good start. Lionsgate Entertainment Core, A shares, does movies, etc. Um, nice action, and for a person holding it more longer term, I'd say this is this is good action. That's what you want to see. I'll be right back. That was a trap and tiger. The missions hour. Dow is up uh, 57. We'll be back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So, Lionsgate, just to refresh, I think it is looking good. It's acting much, much better. It's the duration of this whole holding position of four weeks. It hasn't done four weeks of sideways action without making the H formation and retesting the low. So, yes, I like it. It is good. But do we go back in? I just haven't made a decision about that. I, I don't mind paying up at 966. A little, it's a little bit higher than we got in initially. Um, if it's going to go all the way to the 11 and a half, 12 area over a period of three months, 
I'll have to make a decision about that because that monthly chart is still really ugly. All right, so here we are. Um, I want you to show you something else. Uh, I had a question about the SMHs. Yeah, the SMHs are almost being dragged up today. They would have been lower, I think, if it wasn't for the fact that the market is generally higher. Trading at 133.50 made an all-time high. 135.26 on the 15th of uh, November went into a chapman wave. This is very unusual. I talk about the chum wave two bar reversal, one of the techniques that we use, but this is a three bar reversal. <clears throat> now, what does that mean? Have a look at that chart. You've got three bars um, at and then close to and then at, uh, close to again, all time highs. 135.26 on the 15th. The high the next day is. 135.20, six cents lower. The high the next day, and a very small doji candle bar. Um, next day is 135.25, one penny lower. And then it pulls back sharply. Look at the MACD, did turn down. See this exactly here with the MACD, uh, sorry, with the seven and the, with the green, nine EMA and the black, 14 pre moving average. This is exactly the action I thought we would see in the, in the Dow. Uh, so far, we have the S&P or the accused. We haven't seen that. Instead, it, um, it went higher. So it says to me that the semis are starting to see some kind of a pullback. I heard something the other day that suggested that the, there was a lot of overorder, underordering, underordering, underordering for uh, six or eight months or almost a year. And boom, they start to overorder. And now I think they've overordered. So we're going to see how this turns out for the semiconductors because they have led the market up. They've led the market down. They've been real uh, kind of a barometer. And now uh, we'll see. Do, do the SMHs in the next uh, week or two make all-time highs above 135.26? Or do we see a pullback? And that pullback will only start in earnest if first you go under 132.50. Wow, that's only a dollar lower than this. No, I'm going to make it a little bit more than that. 130 closes under 132. Then there's a good chance of 130.60 being tested. So far, it's holding okay off this spectacular day. Look at that big green candle. One of the, one of the biggest we've had in quite a while. Uh, yesterday, uh, the Mariboza candle opens and, uh, and closes at, uh, opens at the low, closes at the high. Virtually no wick. And very often, in my interpretation of this candle, you start to get some kind of a pullback, a doji candle, then a pullback, and then maybe it can go higher. But that's where the two things are. One is that it tells you that there was concerted effort right into the close to keep buying from the opening bell. And that says it's a little bit overbought, and then it has to digest the gains. What happens after the second bar, after the, this Mariboza candle, is going to be important. That makes tomorrow important. It to tell us whether it breaks above the high of, of uh, where is it, the high of yesterday, which is 133.96, or goes underneath the low so far today is 132.86, but it goes under 132.50. Okay, so that's, and, and this is really important because the semiconductors, look at that weekly chart, just I, I could even put a little circle here to say, hey, a little round, around, an oval pattern, consolidation right at the top. Um, what happens next? Does it, does it arch over? Or does it break to another high? And leg C in the monthly chart, and and it did make a leg in the 120, made a peak D, triple top double, uh, right there, the one that I was talking about, um, over those three daily bars. All right, now what we got is a um, question I had. Oh, XLE. Um, someone mentioned about the energy stocks, maybe oil more than energy, but the uh, XLE is just stuck in a range. It's at 59.52 S&P Select Energy Spider Fund, uh, down 38 cents. And um, to me, it's just it's stuck between 60.65 and 58.75. In that range, breaks above it, that'll be good, breaks below it. And that'll be bad. If you hear a buzzing in the in the background, that's because this is a, one of the final weeks. You want to get rid of as many leaves as you you can. I mean, and that done, and that's kind of important. I'm not going to say do it later. I want it done now because it's going to rain and then it'll be a soggy uh, Thanksgiving uh, weekend. Uh, I hope not, but I want to have everything ready. So sorry about the background noise. Um, now, a couple of things that we need to look at here. In the crude oil, uh, let me just look at SLB, Slumberger. We looked at it recently, and I said it's holding okay, but the weekly chart says 
it has to very quickly come out of this. It looks like a kidney right here. This is the kidney pattern. It's a W formation. And this right side is taking three extra weeks. It should not be here. It's trading at 36.48 minus 61. It's in leg E. Maybe this is an F slash A in the daily. All I'm saying is that I think it's a little toppy. And I wouldn't be surprised if it has to test uh, the 36.50 area, if it holds that. 35.50 area, if it holds that, that's good. If it breaks to 37.65 or higher, that's the kind of action I want to see. And it has to do it really soon. Today would have been an opportunity. It didn't do that. It's already gone to a leg C in the weekly chart. Very, uh, not very strong action at all. So this is something to keep your eye on because I think that these, um, I, I, is that, is this some, is that a driller oil service? Can't remember exactly. Um, so, and, and what we're looking at here is that it's starting to form some kind of a candle in the monthly that says it's done it before. This is the first time the technicals are starting to say, you know what, there could be a rally in these uh, summer J, what's in, in, in V now, in V is not right. I can't remember, I'm trying to think of the whole of the list. Oh, AAP? No, that's not. That's advanced order parts, APA. Yeah, APA, Apache, made a peak D way back in November. It's pulled back from the 25s to the 22s now, 23 and a half. It's just stuck in a range. But I have to see. Do I see, the, oh, Scott and Safety Harbor. Scott and Safety Harbor, how are you? Uh, great. I want to look at Kevin X, but before we get there, Schlumberger, I just bought 3,000 shares yesterday, um, and I've traded it before. Uh, I think Schlumberger is a, you know, there's going to be a breakout. It's not going to be anything like uh, X for that movement, but it's it just has to. It's just forcing its way uh, through that $40 range. So, okay, let's right, look back, at Teva. Yeah, so, back, let's go back to U.S. Steel for a minute. The U.S. Oh. Steel. I mean, it is just a rock-solid wall, that $14 mark, you know, and it's it's just pounding away at that, and uh, eventually it'll get through. I think once it gets through that 14 then it's going to, you know, it's going to graduate so into still, uh, uh, let me just say, uh, Scott, 21, you know. <laughs> U.S. Steel trading at 13.82, up three cents. It's had a really nice range. Talk about a rectangle formation. Wow, this is just a great example of that rectangle formation. When it gets to the lower part, you get ready. You can buy the buy the dips. When it gets to the upper part, you've got to be ready to take some profits. And it's just been doing that over and over. Now, the big thing about U.S. Steel is that if the MACD, which is trying to cross positive now, crosses positive, in a very strong way with the green line, the 9 period differential already expanding over the red, and it starts to get to 14.30, 28, 14.31. I think then all of a sudden your weekly chart is going to improve a lot. It'll be the first time that you've seen enough technicals to say U.S. Steel could, in fact, start to get quite a bit higher. Hold on, we'll look at Teva. You want to hold on? The Tax yeah, Act probably. of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from 30000 to 75000 The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in a Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom 
Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting tfnn.com. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Hi, folks, we're back, and uh, we're looking at Teva Pharmaceuticals trading at 10.58, down 14 cents. Scott, you still there? Yeah, you remember I put the call on Teva when no one was interested in it. At Correct. Eight. And uh, but I had no idea. I mean, I got out at, at, at the 890 range and haven't been really back in since. But there were some talks of a settlement yesterday and so forth, which oh. bumped it up 50 cents. So, and Scott, it's on my hot sheet for the new year. Teva, okay. Schlumberger, so Scott, and, uh, and let me, um, Scott, Steel. hello, Scott, I wanted to just tell you, it's right Bumping it out a doji candle in leg F from the Chapman wave. This is the uh, seventh highest, uh, sixth highest peak. And now you've got to be a little careful. It's going to pull back probably. 10.22 um, is the nine period moving average support, 991. I would not be surprised after such a fantastic move. It pulls back, but you're absolutely correct. Based on the technicals, this is a beautiful move. It's gone to leg D in the weekly chart. It's done everything that one could wish for. Now I think it's time for a little bit of a pullback, but absolutely keep it on your list because this is, is still in play. Very good. It's the first time that the monthly chart uh, in, in, in about a year almost, uh, maybe a year, uh, that is starting to show some signs of strength. So, yep, it should pull back, but I think it's absolutely in play. Good eye. Yeah, I, I hope everyone has a, a wonderful holiday and and try to put the market out of your mind for two or three days because in the in the end it, the money doesn't matter the people matter. absolutely so scott best of uh, best of thanksgivings to you thank you for that advice and thank you for some of those tips you've been giving uh, our listeners I do appreciate it have a wonderful weekend speak to you soon bye-bye bye-bye so folks there are a couple of things that i was asked to look at i'm going to just do this now uh, the TVIX is down in the 6.07 uh, area. So the question is, in this particular time frame, now on Monday, I believe it is a split. The split is not an issue. It does make it an issue if you want to buy a lot, and it's just nice to buy a lot of a $6 stock rather than much less of a 6 six36 or maybe even a $60 stock. I don't know what they're going to turn it into. It usually has quite a big pop in, in um, number, but it's the same number of shares. So all I'm saying is, uh, yesterday I was recommending take a little bit off if you're uncomfortable. I do believe you're going to see uh, the TVIX at some point up in the eights. You might have to wait, and it's still shrinking. Remember, every day it shrinks because of the, the makeup of it. But if you are, that's if you're holding it as a um, part of the insurance to to a portfolio, then you have no choice because this is this is the way it is. And yes, it's a low number, but a low number going from an eight to a six, 20%, uh, 25%. Uh, these are these are big numbers in percent terms. But if that's 
the only way you're going to protect the portfolio thus far. Now, if you do it as a trade, the fact that um, the TVX was holding in the eights, then it went to the sevens, and then it slipped down to the sixes, it means that you're probably going to have to see two consecutive or two out of three consecutive days of really bad news to get it back into the 743 area, $1.50 higher, because um, you, it has to be built on fear, but it can't be one hour. It can't be just a bad news thing um, at uh, 1245. And then at uh, 145, you got a good news event, and they got a bad. They got a, you can't be mixing it. It's got to be a theme that is becomes pervasive. It starts once, then it then it starts to increase, and all of a sudden, over the period of a week, you've got just bad news filtering into the market. And what I mean by bad news is I mean that the market interprets whatever it is as bad news. And then that thing gets played over and over. Remember, I, I talk a moment here yeah, about the uh, the um, uh, political situation. We have a governor here, Patrick, Governor Patrick. He's just joined the race. Now, Governor Patrick just joins the race, and then you've got Bloomberg, who just joins the race. Bloomberg might have had no money, but he had constant uh, name recognition by at least enough people to say, yes, it could become a viable name in the candidacy roster. That doesn't mean to say you could have gone in, but just a name that's recognizable. But even then, people who don't uh, have anything to do with the stock market, who don't often, you know, didn't know that he was mayor of New York, um, at least it's a name. I mean, Patrick is governor of Massachusetts, um, you can debate whether it was successful or not. There were a lot of scandals that weren't publicized very much because the Boston Globe uh, loved, loved Patrick, so nothing gets written about. But there were scandals, but nothing nothing that anybody's going to talk about. So, um, and you've got Patrick and you've got Warren from Massachusetts. I mean, really? So Patrick has about as much chance of, uh, you know, a, a snowball here in Massachusetts uh, on, a, on a June summer's day. Um, but what I wanted to say is all the other names, when you think about it, if you this, if I always think middle America, when I lived in South Africa, I used to always say, hey, the fashions in, in the cosmopolitan city of Johannesburg, the commercial city of, of, of uh, South Africa, a very modern city, knocked down old buildings, built skyscrapers, real designs. When I came here to Boston, the, the architecture was just old-fashioned, nothing new. So it was actually a revelation to me the other way around. I thought it would be a modern America. It was actually old-fashioned America. So I always used to think fashions come late to, to, to a country like South Africa, but very fashion-conscious country. Um, we had all sorts of, uh, we had American cars, British cars, Yugoslavia, we had the Hugo, we had the French Peugeot, we had Renault, we had all German cars, Australian, the whole Holden, everything. Um, you wouldn't think that, but we had more selection than you had here in the United States. And I used to always watch, watch fashion, and I would think, okay, DuckTales, that, that came along six months after Elvis. All these things take a long time to take place, it takes six months before they, they and you remember tattoos, has anybody talked about tattoos now? Remember I said tattoos are out, if anything, you want to be buying the tattoo uh, eraser, the, 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 the shop that can take out tattoos, because that's done. P caps don't wear them in the, uh, backwards anymore, only the old folks in tennis do, do that. Um, same as jeans, old, old, old fogies are wearing jeans or de denims all the time. Young people don't necessarily wear denims. So I look at fashion. That's something I watch all the time. Here we go back to, to uh, the, the race. Until you get two to three names that are promulgated every hour of every day, seven days a week, every single week, every hour of every day, right through to the election, you cannot get that middle, that middle American, like when I was in South Africa, Johannesburg, you go just... I've always said you can transplant a cosmopolitan city person probably from Johannesburg to Athens to uh, Rome 
to, to uh, New York, to Sydney, Australia, they're all of the same kind of thinking. You move just eight to 10 or 15 miles away, it becomes much more conservative. So until you get the people uh, conservative in, in the literal sense, until you get the people in middle America saying the names of the candidates every hour of the day, to have it on the tip of their tongue, these people don't have a chance. You've got to be the one that is mentioned all the time, all the time. So I thought I'd mention that. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as a number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge heard here at TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So the TVIX on Monday is going to be split five times. In other words, the trading is six. <coughs> excuse me, six thirty right now. If it's split right this moment, it would be 30, about thirty-one share, thirty-one dollars. So for every five of these little guys that you got right here, you'll get one of the new share. <coughs> so, all right. Um, I, I still say, I said it before, so if, if you are getting nervous, is if your objective was to say, okay, we're about to go down sharply, the TVIX should go to the 850, 910 area, the opposite has happened. You've got, to, you've got to have money management because this is not the sort of thing you want to play around with. I know someone who had, well, literally thousands of these little guys uh, in the, I can't remember what they said, eight, maybe eight way back in this, uh, sometime in, the, uh, in 2015, um, and never ever covered them. Even though they made money, they didn't uh, take the opportunity and get out. So um, I don't even know what it's worth, maybe pennies by this time, who knows? Because um, it's split so many times. So, um, all right, here we go. Um, within the context of the market right now, let me just do this, INDU, <clears throat> the Dow, is trading at 28,112, up 45 points. 
45 points is good. Three good green candles. My impression was that today we will start to see a very narrow close and probably some kind of a pullback tomorrow. <clears throat> Friday will be very important, last day of the month. Uh, just it's, it's just kind of important, last day of the week. Um, we'll see what happens there. But I'll just give you numbers. At this point, the, the Dow would probably have to go under yesterday's low of 27,970. Probably have to go 27,800. Um, 27,850 to even make some kind of an impact in the green line, the, the nine period exponential moving average. And I don't know how I can do it unless it's going to be on some disappointing news. That's the way I'm looking at it right now. Uh, we have a position and try to manage this position. I thought that uh, it would work uh, <clears throat> in terms of the timing. Uh, we've got it's it's not a uh, it's a position that has about a one percent one to one and a little bit percent uh, uh, loss. We'll see what happens here, but I think the Dow is the one to watch. And have a great day. You've got Steve Rhodes coming up. You've got uh, Dave White, and then I'll be back at three o'clock to do the Tom O'Brien show. Stay tuned. Have a wonderful day, and I hope to see you later on at three o'clock or tomorrow. Have a great day.